What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. I want to talk about a proposed fight between three division world champion Javante Tank Davis and former unified welterweight champion Keith One Time Thurman. One time? You know, this fight is getting a lot of buzz out here in these YouTube streets. And when I first heard about it a couple days ago, I, you know, I didn't even really, you know, kind of shrug my shoulders. When you look at this fight on face value, I'm like, oh, this fight's not happening. But it seems to be getting a lot of buzz. You know, I went to uh, Javante Tank Davis' uh, Twitter page, and he ain't saying anything about the fight, saying, oh, I'm not fighting him, or, you know, it could be a fight that I might be looking at. I haven't heard anything, so maybe it's something to this fight. But when I first, uh, heard about this fight, I was like, ah, nah, it's not happening. What would be the purpose of Javante Tank Davis going up to 147 and fighting a guy that has no belts? What would be the point of that? If you're going to risk going up and wait, fighting a bigger guy, a naturally bigger guy, you would think you would want to fight for a belt. Even if it's like a regular belt, which is pretty much the belts he has now. He's got three belts in three different weight classes. I think two of those three belts are regular belts. I think one of them is a uh, what you consider uh, a full title. And, uh, you know, he could go up there. I can see him maybe going up to 147 and fighting Jamal James. Jamal James has the regular version of the WBA welterweight title. But the problem with that is Jamal James has back-to-back -back mandatories that he's going to have to fulfill. See, because when you get a vacant belt, it's pretty much handed to you, you are obligated in the WBA to fight back-to-back -back, uh, mandatory. So he got Buttervive and he got another guy with a, uh, from over there. One of, he's basically got two fights with two European fighters back-to-back -back that he's got to uh, fulfill. So that fight is not going to happen. You know, I know his uh, promoter, Leonard Ellaby, right after he defeated Mario Barrios, got on his Twitter page and said, wouldn't it be something if uh, Javante Tank Davis goes up to 147? And a lot of people was like, ooh, a lot of people started speculating, man, maybe go up to 147 and fight Andre Berto. Or maybe go up to 147 and fight Danny Garcia. But like I said, same thing with Keith One Time Thurman. Like Keith One Time Thurman has a bigger name than those two guys. You know, you look at the pay-per-view he did with Manny Pacquiao. It did 600,000 pay-per-view buys. Now he was the B-side, but he still was part of a, a successful pay-per-view. And Manny Pacquiao, Two uh three, well I guess the last two or three pay-per-view fights before the keep one time Thurman pay-per-view fight did not do six hundred thousand. Now you know the third fight with Bradley did around what three hundred, four hundred thousand pay-per-view buys. And what he did with uh Broner, which was good, I think did around four hundred thousand pay-per-view buys. So what he did with Keep One Time Thurman was the best pay-per-view buys that uh Manny Pacquiao had done in several years. So you got to give him credit for selling that fight. He did a good job of wearing the black hat in that fight, talking trash to uh, Pacquiao, said Pacquiao got short arms, called him T-Rex and all that type of stuff. So he did a good job, man. I remember him in the opening uh, press conference. They was, uh, he had some little rap song he came on up to the uh, press conference uh, table where they were doing a press conference. He pointed to Pacquiao and he was quoting a little rap song and stuff like that. He did a good job of promoting that fight, Keith One Time Thurman. So I understand that a fight between him and Javante Tank Davis probably would be the best opponent available at the weight class of 147 pounds due to the fact that Chance Bud Crawford seems to be getting ready to fight Sean Porter. And as we know, Earl Spence Jr. is taking on Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Now if Pacquiao can get the upset, that's what I'll be uh uh, looking for to happen if I'm Javante Tank Davis if Pacquiao pulls the upset then yeah If I'm Javante Tank Davis, I call out Manny Pacquiao That's a guy that's coming up from lower weight class like you be doing right now And that's a guy that's similarly the same size as you Now if uh, Errol Smith Jr. is successful, obviously that guy's way too big for Javante Tank Davis Plus those guys are good friends, but you know friends are fought before But the bottom line is this guy is too big and uh, Errol Smith Jr. has said that after the Manny Pacquiao fight that uh, if he can't land the Terrence Bud Crawford fight, that he's moving up to 154 pounds. So that fight will be out the water. So I just don't see any reason why Javante Tank Davis would move up to 147 pounds and fight a guy with no belt. What would be the purpose? Because if he beat Keith one time, Thurman, you know, that's a good win. That's a good feather on this cap. But what you going to do? You going to stay at 147? 
you know, you gonna try to get, land a fight with Terrence Bud Crawford, uh, Sean Showtime Porter winner? Or will you try to land a fight with, I, you know, I just don't, I don't see him beating those guys. Those guys are much bigger than him. And his uh, skill level and talent level ain't that much superior than any of those guys to make up the difference for the lack of size. Especially Terrence Crawford. You can argue that Terrence Crawford got more skill than Javon the Tank Davis. They, 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 they basically me on the same level. Uh, the thing about Terrence Bud Crawford, he can go both ways. He's a switch hitter. So he's a little bit even more versatile than uh, Javon the Tank Davis. And he's a naturally bigger guy. That fight might go like the uh, Crawford Gamboa fight went four or five years ago if Javante would uh, try to challenge him. So I don't see that happening. So uh, outside of Jamal James' fight, and Jamal James, again, is uh, obligated to fight two back-to-back -back mandatory, so that fight not happening. But that could I can see that happening, him jumping up to 147 and fighting for his regular version, and that would be a wonderful fight for Javante Tank Davis. But that fight is not going to happen here in the near future. So I think the best bet is for Javante Tank Davis to stay at 140 or 135, and I think the likely opponent is Roland Riley Romero, who's talking a lot of trash to not only Javante Tank Davis, but Devin the Dream Haney. Both of them call them his daughters. Basically say he want to knock both of them out. And he said, basically said he want to, he basically called uh, Javante Tank Davis punch drunk, you know, making a reference toward, you know, his speaking skills. You know, you've seen him do several interviews with Brian Cust and stuff like that and stuff like that. He has a hard time, you know, sometimes, uh, really getting his words out, man. But I just think that's being more nervousness than anything. But, I, but when you hear uh, Javante just out there talking with his friends or going back and forth with a particular fighter, you look at what he did with Tevin, with Tevin Farmer, they both went back and forth. You know, he ain't had no problems uh, talking trash. He basically said you got four losses and he looking to fight champion. He went back and forth with Tevin Farmer real good. And he did a good job of going back and forth with uh, Ryan Garcia at that uh, Mike Tyson uh, radio podcast. What they call it, hot boxing. He did a good job going back and forth with him when they was both on, uh, I think he was on Zoom. And uh, Ryan Garcia was talking trash on Mike Tyson's phone to uh, Javante Tank Davis. So he's a good trash talk. I just think when he get on in front of the camera and you're doing the interview, you're getting asked a specific question, I think he kind of get a little nervous or something. He can't get his uh, words out, get his sentence, sentences together. But I don't think what Riley's saying, he punch drunk, basically saying that he, he can't talk. He punch drunk at an early age or whatever. Riley, Riley need to get that work, man. He talking a lot of trash. He talking he gonna knock both guys out. You know, I, I would like to see him fight either one of those two guys next. But in particular, it'll be a little bit easier on matchup to make between Romero and Davis. But both of those guys uh, with the PBC, and it'll be an in-house fight. And as we know, Floyd Mayweather Jr. said right after the Davis Barrios fight in the post-fight press conference that they're gonna be doing in-house fights with Davis. They say it's no Mayweather said it's no sense in making another company great. And they are not looking to branch out and fight guys under different promotional companies. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But that's just my quick synopsis on the thing. I don't think it's a good idea of him to go up to 147 and fight Keith one time Thurman where there's no belt on the line. I just don't think it's a good idea. You know, but I can see them maybe looking at that because, you know, he's done two pay-per-views. The first pay-per-view did what around what 220, 225,000 pay-per-view buys, and this last one with Mario Barrios, who didn't have the same name recognition as Leo Santa Cruz, did 215,000 pay-per-view buys. So that was just a slight dip, but still successful. So you know they want to get this next pay-per-view where they can trend, trend upward, and keep one time Thurman fight with Javante Tank Davis will definitely do better than his first two pay-per-views. So that was that's what they might be looking at, but it's a dangerous fight. And it's a fight with no belt on the line. And it's a guy that has quick hands, good jab, explosive power. And Tank has shown that he can be hit at times. He was getting touched up in the Leo Santa Cruz fight. He got caught with some shots in the Mario Barrios fight. He might not be able to take those type of punches, especially early on as he was taking shots in the Mario Barrios fight. He's not going to be able to take those type of shots versus Keith one time Thurman. So, and then, then again, like I said, the, the main the main obstacle, in my opinion, is just no belt on the line. What would be the uh, option? You know, he he would want to become the a four division world champion, holding belts in four different weight classes. That'll be something to, uh, that's rarely seen, if ever seen, in the sport of boxing. So, I think Jamal James would be more of a uh, opponent they look at. But that fight is not going to happen unless you get those two guys that's got those back to back. Mandatories. I don't know how they'll work with the WBA. You would have to pay basically two guys step aside money. So I don't see that happening. 
I think those guys want to get their shot at that title. And so I don't think that's going to be the next fight either. So if I if I had to guess right now, I think the uh, more likely fight next for Javante Tank Davis will be Roland Raleigh Romero. And if and, I, and if I look at the Plan B, the second guy would be Gary Russell Jr. But the problem with Gary is he's got a mandatory with Ray Vargas. And uh, the PBC is trying to find a spot for that fight. You know, they're trying to see what's going on. I know the Showtime should be coming out with their uh, fall winter lineup. The cards that they're gonna put on from uh, for the fall and winter. I know they should be, you know, they got all the way up to what? Uh, September 11th, I think they got the 410 fight with uh, Figueroa September 11th. So they need to come out with the October card all the way through the end of the year. So that should be coming out shortly. And uh, maybe Gary Russell will, uh, and Ray Vargas, that fight, that's a mandatory for uh, Gary Russell's WBC title uh, and 126 pounds. And I think uh, they're going to be looking to put that fight on probably on Showtime or somewhere in the fall. So, but, so that, I think they'll probably take him out of the equation as far as Javante Tank Davis' next fight. They, they're both probably going to be fighting around the same time. And again, uh, Russell has a mandatory. But they might have put that on the undercard of the Javante. Say to do this. You put Gary Russell and Ray Vargas. I'm thinking out loud right now. You put Gary Russell and Ray Vargas as the co-main event to Javante Tank Davis and Raleigh Roland Romero. And you tell uh, Russell, man, if he get that win, then he'll get the winner of Javante Tank Davis versus Raleigh Roland Romero. Roland, Rolando. Raleigh Romero, I'm, got the, I'm twisting, I'm getting the middle name and the first name mixed up, but you know what I'm talking about, Raleigh, old Raleigh, talking a lot of trash, he said, uh, Devin the Dream Haney is the, he got a suspect chin, he's the mere con of the lightweight division, man, he out here talking reckless, man, and uh, somebody got to shut him up, man, he believe in himself, he's got a high but self-belief, man, he think he can beat any guy out there, so get him what he looking, give him what he looking for, that should be the fight to make next with uh, him and Javante Tank Davis. You throw Gary Russell Jr. and Ray Vargas on the undercard as a co-main event. Gary Russell gets that win. Javante take care of business. Then you set up Gary Russell Jr. versus Javante Tank Davis in the first quarter of 2022. You put that fight on the East Coast, Barclays Center. If that's up and running, you put that over there or put that over there in the D.C. or Baltimore area, and that fight would do big numbers over there in those Three locations so we will see what happens and we'll see we will see what transpires but let me know your thoughts about Javante Tank Davis versus Keith one time Thurman you think this is possible I give it a 25% chance of happening I think the more likely scenario is the fight between Javante and Raleigh uh, but you let me know what you think uh, how it's going to play out as far as Javante Tank Davis's next opponent let me know your thoughts and who you like if the fight does go down I think it's a dangerous fight for uh, Javante Tank Davis. But I think if Javante Davis can navigate himself through the earlier rounds, and if the power don't get to uh, Javante Tank Davis early on, I think as the fight goes on, I think Javante Tank Davis's chances of winning increase as the round goes up. But I think he just has a little bit higher boxing IQ than Keith One Time Thurman. And Thurman is a guy that has a good boxing IQ himself. Don't get me wrong, but I just think that Javante Tank Davis's boxing IQ is on the level of a Terrence Bud Crawford. You know, Canelo Alvarez, I think his uh, boxing IQ is on the level of those guys. So I think as the fight goes, the further the fight goes, the better the chances that Javante Tank Davis has of winning them. But I think early on, it's going to be the danger zone as far as Javante Tank Davis goes. Because uh, Keith One Time Thurman is a guy that has strong power, especially early in the fight. You just look at the fight between Thurman and uh, Danny Garcia. He rocked Danny Garcia multiple times in the first four rounds of that fight. But as the fight went on, Thurman uh, power seemed to dis, uh, decrease, and uh, Danny Garcia was able to work himself back into that fight and end up losing a razor thin split decision loss to uh, Keith One Time Thurman. I think some of the things could play out against Javante Tank Davis. The, the difference is Javante Tank Davis would be way more aggressive than Danny Garcia was in the second half of that fight. He'll be looking to uh, catch him with uh, big time power shots in the second half of that fight and try to get the stoppage over Keith One Time Thurman. He'll invest to the body more on Keith One Time Thurman. As we know, Keith One Time Thurman is a guy that's been susceptible to body shots. Javante Davis will definitely go to the body and try to take him out in, in the latter part of the fight, second half of the fight, or in the championship rounds of the fight, look to take out Keith One Time Thurman. So it'll be a trigger matchup, man. The press conference will be good. Keith One Time Thurman will sell the fight. 
But again, I go back to no title on the line. Why would you move up to 147? Why don't you stay at 140 and 135 and defend your belts? Maybe the reason is you want a big name, but you want to be doing better pay-per-view numbers than you did in your first two pay-per-views. If that's the case, then maybe you do look at Keith one-time Thurman. Let me know your thoughts about this potential matchup and you think it's going to go down or you think Javante Tank Davis will fight someone else. I think it's going to be Riley, but if you think it's going to be somebody else, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And this is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend, and I holler.